as you were talking, I realized that uh, it reminded me of two things happening in Canada which are very similar. And the first one is, um, two years ago, in the city of Vancouver, which is, again, named after Kuvara, um, there was a chief, Capilano, he's a traditional chief of the Squamish nation. And in 1920, his grandfather was taken out of the longhouse by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and a Catholic priest and was thrown out of his home. And a Catholic Indian chief was put in his place. And that family still runs the reservation. And that's what happened. The traditional people of that land were thrown off and they had a, a, like a substitute chief put in there. So what Capilano did was he wrote to all of the government and church buildings in Vancouver, which is about a million and a half people, and he said to them, none of you ever got permission to build on our people's land and you've never paid us any rent. So we are putting in a notice in court that you owe us all this rent. So either pay up or get off our land. Hmm. So he filed this in the British Columbia Supreme Court and it was filed as a, as a letter. And he then, a bunch of us got together and, and went around to all the churches and the government buildings and posted these on all the buildings. And this was up on YouTube. And in effect, it was uh, an eviction order, an eviction notice, saying that because you haven't paid the land to get off, they ignored it. Of course, this is what they always do: they ignore you, like you don't matter, like hoping you'll just go away, because they know you're right. They know you have truth and law on your side, so they just pretend like you know, <laughs> like you're not there. So after 30 days, they were in a state of illegal trespass, and so Capilano filed another order suing all of them. And this is now a, a case in the Supreme Court, and it's gone to the, the Supreme Court of Canada in Ottawa. And in effect, what he's saying is, we don't need a ruling by a Crown Court. We already know that you're illegally occupying our land, so we're simply going to reoccupy. So at that point... Is it a common law court that... Uh, that no. In Canada, it's a Crown Court. It's an Admiralty Court with this imposed jurisdiction. And um, so then at that point, the question is, what do you do? You can make a declaration, but how are you going to enforce it? So for us now, the question is enforcement. And that's why we're, it becomes very quickly a political issue, uh, because then it's a matter of saying, well, who, who has actual jurisdiction here? So, uh, what I'm reminded of is in, um, as I mentioned before, my family were from Ireland and, and Scotland, and what we did when the English, we wanted the English to get out, is we just set up our own courts and uh, our own legislature alongside the English one in Ireland and began operating like they weren't there. So it's kind of like forming the, the uh, seat of the new, a new society within, within you know, what already exists. So, what is what that started is across Canada now there's other native groups that have tried that and they're not just native groups but, but non-native like white people are taking part in these common law courts and they're making judgments um, and an example of what ha what's happened is in England, I don't know if you followed this a couple of months ago but in Liverpool in a uh, suburb called Birkenhead there was a, a judge who was imposing a county tax uh, like a, a council tax on the local residents, and he had no authority to do that. So one of the, uh, there's a group uh, uh, called Lawful Rebellion in, in England, and they gave the judge a letter saying, we want you to show us your oath of office. So where in your oath of office does it say you have the right to impose this tax? And he couldn't. So 600 people showed up in the courtroom, and they arrested the judge. <laughs> but did he have an oath of office? Because many people in the United States, for example, they can't show an oath of office. Either, right. either they can do it in Germany, because they're, 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 they're just uh, many, 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 many judges in, in, in Germany yeah. don't have an oath of office. They can't give you an oath right. of office, because okay. they don't have. Therefore, they're illegitimate, and they shouldn't be sitting there. That's, that's, so, that's what the people in Birkenhead did is they arrested him. He got away with some help, but the police were helpless because there were 600, and it's up on YouTube. You can see 600 people milling around this courtroom. But what they did in the wake of that is they declared the tax null and void because it goes against our common law citizenry rights, which supersede any statute. And that's the basic...
permissible that the common law courts in Canada that Capilano is operating by now. And that's the basis for this international tribunal we're trying to set up, that it actually should start functioning like a common law court so that we should have the right to appoint peace officers. Now when the police show up, and this is interesting too, when in Vancouver we've gone into churches during the mass and we've stood there very respectfully and have spoken to the people in the congregation. When the police show up, the Capilano was with us, this is about a year and a half ago, and he turned to the police and he deputized them. He said, I am making you a common law peace officer. You are here to ensure the peace, not to take sides. And that's the next step, that is, we need to uh, make judgments and then enforce the judgments. So I could see down the road a little bit, having a common law peace police force that can go and actually make citizens arrest, bring them into court and make decisions. And this is when the power begins to shift towards us. So to do that, you not only need will and clarity, which we all have here, but we also need you know, the courage to follow through and the unity to make it happen. And just before I stop, I want to give another example of how this happened in Canada. In Toronto, which a lot of you know, it's like the, one of the main cities in central Canada, just south of Toronto is the Mohawk Nation, and they were given land by the British uh, because of their role helping fight the Americans in the War of 1812. It's called the Haldeman Tract. It was a huge swath of land in southern Ontario. There's only about 1% of that land left for the Mohawks. The rest of the developers have come and just grabbed it all. So what they've done is they've started the land reclamation project. They're reclaiming the land. So that whenever a developer shows up now with a tractor, there'd be 100, 200 Mohawk women and children and men, and they stand in front of the tractor, and they say, you're not going to build on this land. And it's only by unity and building the community, like getting the community to stop it, that's how they're keeping their land. So that's the other component. We need to somehow mobilize our communities, you know, through education, through reaching younger people, and teaching them the rights and saying we have to put those rights into practice by acting on it. It's so, the same story in New, in, 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 uh, New Zealand. Yeah. That the native, native people that are just claiming the land. They just sit there and claim it for 30 days and then it's there. It's right. because of the common law. There you go. And it's the United States so you can re uh, reply to uh, UCC 207 and then you're under common law. Right. And then you can make your, you can, you can appoint your own notary, appoint your own judge and, and come up with a hundred, uh, hundred people and the rest of the one. Uh, right. Government. And you have just to inform the sheriff not to, not to make, no. not to, not to make any, 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 uh, any noise whatsoever. So you, I would just you can, you can, you can, you can enforce the common law yes, if, if you are with many. We now all that can. That is actually yeah. the point. We all can, and that's why, um, I, just in closing, there's, there's three issues that we all unite on in Canada when we work together: the protection of our children, uh, the protection of Mother Earth and our sovereignty and rights as human beings. So on those three, uh, that's kind of our basis of unity. So the way that I hope we can work together in the future is how do we create these common law courts and actions where we can enforce this, because this is a struggle that goes across all those so-called borders. And uh, I, I look forward to working with you more on those projects in the future. Um, I should just announce our website. Uh, there's several websites, but I have cards here you can take. Uh, it's itccs.org is the Tribune website, and we'll, uh, I have something to give to you folks too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's not any more. Please, please, I can have it. The problem is that in Nederland, the system is not functioning, because the Nederland is very important for the benadering. Yeah, yeah. And when there's a discussion here, then we're not going to talk about the system in Nederland, then we're going to talk about over Duitsland, over Canada, and over New Zealand and the world. It's a problem, it's a problem. It's a problem that here the shock fouch is. Ja. Als je wilt weten wat fout is, moet je ook weten hoe het goed is en waar het anders beter werkt. En dat is ook dus. Je hebt niet alleen dat je in Nederland kijkt. Ik, wij geven af en toe. Dus, uh, de hele middag was het daarover dat in Nederland die deur kunnen ook gewoon zeggen dat het in Nederland derde land, het wereldland is qua justitie. En daar moeten we het dus iets aan doen. En daar gaan we ook aan doen. Ja, maar je gaat alleen praten over Canada, nee. over Frankrijk, over nee. Zeeland. Wij geven aan dat in Canada en over de hele wereld eigenlijk gewoon hetzelfde principe aan gaande is. Het gaat om hier. En ja, dat we van alle kanten het principe leren. Ja. Dat is het probleem. Nou. Het is je vingertje bij Holland, dus het bekende vingertje. Nee, nee, nee. Nee, nee, nee. Wat we nu gaan doen, even 
tot orde. We gaan nu eventjes het samenwerkingsverband met Canada project Neurostaten aangaan en in de, met de bedoeling in de toekomst een, de, de, de elkaars erkenning. En wat ik als ik goed geluisterd heb, als wij uh, als samen dat doen en niet alleen voor zo'n rechtbank staan, maar met de 600, dat is Burgerland, dan heb je iets te zeggen en dan mag je dat doen. Als je alleen naar de kerk toe gaat en dan wordt je door de politie eruit verwijderd. Als je alleen mee bezig bent, is puur fantasie, het is theorie. Het is niet nee, 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 ik, ik kan je die website wel laten zien. Nee, hoe ze in Burgerland, hoe ze in Burgerland 600 man. Als je wat gaat doen, dan moet ja. je wat gaan doen. citizen of, to come here and recognize Eurostat and to ask that we work together in the future along the principles we've been talking about today. And I would like to present this flag, the flag of our Republic of Ganata, to Eurostat and everyone here as a sign of our mutual solidarity and willingness to work together in the future. Okay, thank you. I also have a copy of my book and film here that I'm going to present and two letters from the indigenous nations uh, supporting the tribunal into, into the crimes of church and state and these are for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, hey, hey. Ik, ik zie hier iets verkeerd gaan. 